Hey, welcome to The Men's Room. I'm your host, Mark Sparks. Today's topic, we're looking at natural game, framing sets, and all the technical stuff that goes with that. Today's guest, Cajun. What's up, buddy? Chilling, my man, what's up? Ah, not too much, man, just uh, keeping it real. Yeah, well, that's what I like to hear. So you've been jet-setting for the last little while, man. Yeah, I've been all over the place. I've been, uh, I was just in, coming from Montreal, and I was in Vancouver, and then down in the States a little bit, too, so yeah. You're just doing this, right? It's my job. Give me the down low on, on the Cajun spice. I got into this stuff about two years ago. Um, I had just come out of a long relationship, and so what happened was I was at a buddy's house of mine, and I saw this, uh, I saw this book on the couch. It looked like a Bible, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, what, what, what is that, man? And he said, he said, oh, it's this book called The Game. It's about this writer from Rolling Stone magazine who uh, kind of infiltrates this whole uh, community of, of, of pickup artists mm -hmm. and learns how to like, pick up women and ends up you know, uh, picking up Britney Spears. So I picked it up and I read a few pages and I was like, wow, this is, this is really interesting. I never heard about this before. Mm -hmm. So I borrowed his book and I read it that night, went out the very next night and tried using the lines that were actually in the book and they worked really well. I don't know if it was because I was using the lines or if it was just because I had so much confidence in the lines knowing that they had like, you know, mm -hmm. heard them or seen that they had worked in the book. And, uh, and that was my, my, my first taste and I, I just kind of never stopped since then. I just started pushing myself more and more and more. It's all gradual, you know, you start off small, getting a girl's number. Is, is, or even getting attraction is, is like a huge step. And then right. it keeps going until all of a sudden it's like, you know, getting a threesome is like your next step or, or whatever, whatever your, your goal is, you know? It just, just takes some time, you gotta practice, you know? Right, like anything else. And like anything else. Let's talk about sets and, and, and creating them and, mm -hmm. you know, fill me in a little bit. I'm, I'm new on that stuff. There's a, a progress, you know, there's, um, there's, there's events you follow in, in, a, in a certain order. Okay. And, uh, you know, the, this, our, our standard model is attraction, comfort, and then seduction, which doesn't really take place in the bar. So when you see a girl you like, right, whether it be in a bar, on a bus, in the bank, there's several ways you can go about talking to her. There's indirect and there's direct. Uh, indirect is where you are not really letting her in on that you're attracted to her. It's sort of an excuse to talk to her that, that, that doesn't, um, uh, that doesn't sort of show your hand, you know, it doesn't let right. her know that you are trying to pick her up. Right. And there's direct, which is the exact opposite, where you're letting her know right away that, this you know, you, your intentions, you right. know, it's like, you know, you just say it right, right, right off the bat. Different styles work in different situations. Um, even in a bar, generally, indirect is the way you want to go. And that's the way that we teach. It's the easiest for people who are, who are getting started. But there are situations in the bar where direct is, is, is more beneficial, for instance. Let's say um, that you are, you're, you're in the bar and you see a girl make eye contact with you and she kind of holds it, you know? It'd be, very, um, <laughs> it'd, it'd, be, it'd be very stupid to walk <laughs> over to her and use an indirect line at that point, you know, to say like, what do you guys think, what, what, do, you, what do you think about uh, guys who cheat on their girlfriends or whatever, and whatever the, the many lines we use are. And that would seem kind of like, all right, he is not socially intelligent enough to know that I was obviously giving him an invitation. Um, in those situations, you want to go direct. Right. Um, whenever, whenever a girl looks at me in a bar, I always look back and I hold eye contact. I don't look away until they look away. A lot of guys make, have this mistake, and I'm sure it's happened to you. It's happened to me. It's probably happened to everyone, you know? Pretty girl looks at you. You kind of get a little nervous and you look away. Right. And sure. sometimes you write it off in your mind as being like, yeah, I showed her. I was cool. I'm not, I'm not going to stare at her like all the other her. dudes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, all the other dudes aren't staring at her either. You know, they're staring at her, but not when she's staring at them. Right. Um, so when a, when a pretty girl is staring at you and you hold eye contact, that says a lot about you. I talk to, I, I have a lot of female friends. And, um, and one, the one thing that I always ask them is, uh, you know, when you, when, like, how do you, how do you guys pick up guys in a bar? Like, say you see a guy you like, what do you do? Most of them say the same thing. They just say, well, I look at him. I look at him and, and make eye contact. And they say that, that if a guy who holds eye contact with them um, is, first of all, it's rare. And second of all, it's extremely sexy. My standard line, when a girl makes eye contact with me, I'll walk over, I'll make eye contact, and then I'll walk over and I'll say, listen, you can't look at me like that and not say anything. I'm very unapologetic about my, my advances. I tend to hit on girls mercilessly, and I, I don't apologize about it. One thing I like doing uh, very early on 
uh, is, is, is getting into a sexual frame. For instance, something that I'll say sometimes, even within the first five minutes, I'd love to take you to dinner and like, take you on a date and stuff. I think you're really cool, but I also really want to fuck you. If it's in a group of girls, I'll say that to a girl, and I'll like, hold eye contact with her and, like, and sort of look very confident. And, um, and she'll be like, look at me and like, does, she won't know what to do, first of all. Right. She'll, she'll sometimes like, ask her friends, like, he just, he just told me he wants to fuck me. And then her friends, her friends will be like, really? And like, <laughs> and like, look at me with these eyes. It's like, that's right, I did. You want some too? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another line you can use to sort of set a sexual frame is, you know what? You're really cool. Um, I, I'm just getting to know you and stuff, but you're really interesting. Even if I didn't want to fuck you, I'd still want to hang out with you. Right. If the girl sort of accepts that statement, then she just accepted the fact that you want to fuck her. Right. Which means you can keep going with that. You can, you can keep hitting on her unapologetically because she's already accepted that. She's already accepted the fact that you want to fuck her, right? And she's, right. Okay, and she's okay with it. Right. Essentially, if she doesn't say anything. If you said that to one of your female friends, they'd be like, why did you say what, that? Yeah, like, what's yeah, wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you can't do that. But when you say it to a girl you just met, then you're setting a sexual frame. You're not setting a friend. You know, you're not her friend. You see her as, as well, I mean, you could be your friend, but... Uh, oh, I understand what you're saying. Right. You're, you're setting a bar where you're you setting, see yeah, each other at. Where you're, you're like, I'm a sexual yeah. being. I'm interested in you sexually. I don't give a shit. And, and I'm just going to tell you straight up. And, and when you do that, not only does it show you a lot of confidence, you get a lot of, you get a lot of fucking balls when you can say that to a girl. Uh, and that in itself is attractive. But women are, are just as sexual as guys. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're thinking the same shit we are Absolutely. when they're talking to dudes. You know? It's like, hmm, I wonder how big his dick is or you know, whatever. They're, they're thinking the same stuff. They're just stuff. trained not to talk about it. They're just trained it. not to talk Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. It's socially unacceptable to you. Exactly. And, and, and so when you act on that stuff, you're kind of showing a little bit of social intelligence as well. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's, that's a way you can set a sexual frame. Mm -hmm. You always want to have um, lines in your head so that if you do ever sort of have like a, a brain fart, there's at least something you can just throw out of your mouth that you know is, will work. For instance, um, the one that I used on the TV show, um, the Keys to the VIP, the drug dealer line, um, which uh, people tend to assume you have to look like a drug dealer for it to work, but you don't. In fact, the less you look like a drug dealer, I find, the better it works. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we call an opener. And it goes like, um, hey, guys, I need you guys' help on something. Do you guys think I look like a drug dealer? Uh, and then whatever they answer. All right. I, uh, I've been in the bar for like an hour and a half. And so far, three different girls who came up to me and been like, hey, do you have any weed? And as soon as I say no, they're all like, okay, never mind. And they get all pissed off. So I'm thinking maybe I look like a drug dealer. What, what, what do you guys think? You guys think you look like a drug dealer? And, uh, and then, you know, they'll give me their opinion. And then I'll say, all right, my real question is this. Do guys ever come up to you and want something? And when they realize they can't get it, they get pissed off. And then girls will always be like, yes. And I'll say, I know. It's like your life story, right? All right, I know totally how you feel. We're like best friends now. Uh, here, give me a high five. And then, so that's, that's, that's the opener. Um, after you do an opener, you always want to transition, right? Openers are good to talk about for like 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how long they are. Right. But they suck as, as you know, five minute conversations, right? So you have to do something what we call uh, a transition. A transition is just to get you into a regular sort of a thread of conversation. The best transition that uh, I can give you is, is just, hey, how, so how do you guys know each other? What are you guys like, best friends or something? Yeah, I can tell you guys make the exact same phrase expressions when you talk. Um, See, so you just did it right there. And they usually they'll, they'll look at each other when you say that. You say, right. See, like right there. And then they'll, they'll be like, ah! But after that, you want to go into what we call interactive value demonstrations. Is a technical way of... of, of interactive of, value demonstrations. Yeah, basically, you're going you're gonna to show them that you're like a cool, interesting guy by some little games you can play. Um, for instance, uh, if you look at your, your um, index finger... And your, and your ring finger. Mm -hmm. yeah, your ring finger this. is longer than your index finger. It means you have more testosterone. And just you know, the opposite, if your index finger is longer than your ring finger, it means you have more estrogen. Most guys tend to have a longer ring finger. What's, uh, yeah, so your, your ring finger is a little, oh, they're kind of close though. Yeah, you, may, you may be in tune with your female side. Um, but essentially, you can play these little games with girls, you know, and say like, hey, give me your hands, guys, let me see this. And then if they all have, let's say they all have, you know, a longer, a longer ring finger, you're like, what are you guys, like the women's basketball team or something? <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on here? Or, right. you know, if they have the all shorter, um, or sorry, all shorter uh, ring, ring finger. fingers, you'd be like, what am I, on the view or something? What's going on? Right. Um, and just, you know, you want to tease them a little hmm. bit. 
uh, basically be be a guy that that is is fun to talk to, you know, and is interesting and can and can you know keep the conversation going and, and making it fun. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I mean, you're in you're in comfort, you know. Comfort's all about building commonalities, building a connection, you know, establishing rapport and and um, getting to know the real use, you know, the real the real e each other's. That's how you get a girl to answer her phone when you call her. You know, too many guys get a number. They don't go into comfort, you know. And they're gone. And they're a lot of the time. Sometimes they'll answer. I mean, if, you, if you're a good-looking guy, or maybe you went really sexual. Um, actually, if you go really sexual in a bar, that's usually a mistake, because what happens is they'll get something called buyer's remorse. <laughs> or when you call them next time, like you make it with a club and shit, you call her the next day or two days later, or whatever, and all of a sudden she doesn't have those feelings anymore, and it's like, oh, that's the guy that I made out with in the club. If I meet up with meet up with him, he's just gonna want to, you know, start right at making me out again. Right. And that's kind of that's kind of uncomfortable. And that's mm -hmm. why they don't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. But the way to the way to get around that is is to build a connection with them. You don't want to be guy number eighty seven from the bar. You want to be, you know, Mark who hosts a TV show and you know has dreams and has aspirations and, and that sort of stuff. And that's that's how you become a real person in their minds instead of this random guy from the bar. Natural game. What's that about? Um, natural game is something that I've been focusing on more. Uh, I, used to be, I used to be very into routines, and when you do routines long enough, you start realizing that it's not the routines that are, that are attracting uh, the women. It's, it's sort of the underlying beliefs you have about those routines, and this, this confidence, mm -hmm. and that sort of directly relates to, to natural game. Like I always ask my, my female friends, what is, what is the best pickup? You know, what, is, what is the best line a guy, a guy has, has ever said to you? Right. They all say the same thing, and that is, the best line that a guy has ever used on them is when they were in a situation, usually, where they weren't expected to get hit on, and a guy has just come up to them and very, very um, honest and, uh, and just said simply, listen, I think you're really cute. Um, I would kick myself in the ass if I didn't come over and say, you know, introduce myself. So, how you doing? I'm Derek. Nice to meet you. Uh, listen, I, I, I got to go, but um, you should give me your number. I'd, I'd love to talk to you again sometime. Right? It's, it's not like a... It's not like a some crazy line or anything, anything like this. It's just a very simple, yeah. yeah. It's a simple, like you know, natural line, and and women love that stuff. That is how women want to be picked up. They'll go home and they'll like call their friends and be like, "Oh my God, you're not gonna believe what happened. The cutest guy came up to me and was like, I think you're cute. And anyway, he was he was so cute, and I gave him my number. And oh my God, and like girls never really get hit on uh, like that. You know, they do, but it's very rare unless right. they're tremendously beautiful. And, and, you know, that is, that is probably the best way that you can actually um, attract a woman, especially in, in the daytime um, when, when, you know, women aren't really used to getting hit on. These girls aren't attracted to the lines that I'm saying. They're attracted to the natural aspects of, of my game, body right. language, you know, tonality, uh, eye, eye contact, um, humor. You know, all these things are, are things that... Um, are, are much more much more important than any line you could ever say. So now you said women aren't used to getting hit on, especially in the daytime, unless they're tremendously beautiful. Right. And even then, actually, you know what? Even even if they are tremendously beautiful, it actually they might even get get hit on less. Um, I actually, I honestly, I would say a girl, and I don't like rating girls on a, sure. on a number scale, but right. if you're going to say like an eight, you know, out of ten, an eight probably might get hit on more uh, in the daytime or even at night than a 10. Just because a 10 um, is, I mean, you have to have a lot of confidence to approach a 10. For sure. For, for, from a guy's point of view. Oh, well, absolutely. It's like the holy grail, you know? It's like, I... She's there. Yeah, She's you there. know? It's like you, you get... it's really not. Yeah, and you get, you get caught up and you think you're going you're gonna to mess things up and you, you make these excuses in your brain. These are things we called... Uh, limited beliefs, limiting beliefs. Mm. You know, I'm I'm not good looking enough. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm you know all these all these excuses you make in your brain to validate uh, your excuse for not going over. Well, that happens. That kicks in. Right. And and you and you don't approach these so these really beautiful women probably don't get approached that often. Um, and when they do, it's it's probably not usually very good anyway. So so yeah, approach the tens. You know, try it out. Who cares? You know, if you get if you get. Um, if she like chews you out or whatever, then at least you tried, you know? It's like Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Right. Take the shot, see what happens. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna, you're gonna learn something you didn't, you know, you're gonna learn maybe something you did wrong or, um, you know, I, I, I still think to this day that, that um, and it doesn't very, happen very often that I get uh, blown out, uh, but, but when it does, I love it because it, it, it lets me know what I did wrong 
and I always fix something right away. You're going to learn a lot more from getting blown out than you are from, from having it go well. I like it because you didn't say the word failure. There's no such thing as failure. It's all feedback. Exactly. But if you take it as feedback, you can always learn and be better the next time. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't end when you, get, when you get blown out. That's not the end. The end is like way, when you die is, is essentially the end, or when you get married, depending on how, how you look right. at it. We call this um, seeing the matrix. You can, you can read into social situations a lot more easily than, and you see a lot more than, than, than regular, regular people can. I love the philosophy. I love the, you know, the, the kind of the, the mind work of a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. So how would you go about, I'm, I'm a dude who, I have nothing right now. You know what I mean? I've called you up and I need some help. For new guys, usually the best advice I can give them, there's, there's um, a few things that I always say to new guys, and that is, step one, go out, right? Start going out. Start, start adopting a lifestyle of someone who, who, who goes out and practices this stuff, because you're not going to get good, no matter how many good lines, how much good advice I, I, I give you or mm -hmm. anyone else. It's not going to work unless you practice it. And even then, it's probably not even going to work the first few times. You have to have, it's, it's, it's all about your... Your, your confidence and your, I mean, it's like anything you were, you were ever good at in your life, right? You, there was always a point when you weren't riding a bike, you know, anything. There was always a point when you weren't, but you kept doing it, you kept practicing, and eventually you were good at it. Now, there's, there's tricks I can teach you, you know, training wheels, if you will, right. but they're not going to give you the, the, the success, you know, the, that you want right away. It's, uh, it, you have to work at it, but start going out. Mm -hmm. um, some guys can get away with, with you know, playing it cool and not smiling too much. You notice me on Keys of the VIP episode, a lot of guys said, oh, you're never smiling and stuff. Well, that's just, that's just my, my character, you know? Right. I kind of play the bad guy type right, thing. Yeah. And, and that works for me. But as a general rule, smile, eye contact is huge. Um, having complete confidence in your social mastery. Now, you don't have to actually have that. You don't need to have a social mastery. In fact, nobody really has social mastery. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes some time. Yeah, but... Fake it till you make it, you know? And if something happens where you don't know what's, what, what to say or what to do, just lean back and smile. You'll find that when you're comfortable in a situation that's uncomfortable, you make other people comfortable too. And as long as you're comfortable with yourself, then people you know, are going to be comfortable as well, especially if you're the guy and you're leading the conversation anyway. Mm -hmm. people, people bounce their, their emotions off of you, you know, especially in, in something like this where you're, where you're talking to women you've never met before. Um, if you go in, you can have the best line in the world, but if you say it and you're uncomfortable when you say it, then you're going to make them uncomfortable. It's like you could have the, the funniest joke in the world, right? You have like the best joke, but if you don't believe that it's funny when you tell it, then it's not. And likewise, uh -huh. you can have the stupidest joke in the world, but if you really think it's hilarious, there's a good chance other people will too. And, and that's sort of the whole philosophy behind this natural sort of uh, in, inner game. Right. And, and having that is very important. Having confidence in yourself. Um, and just believing that, that, you know, there's nothing, nothing that could come up, nothing that could happen that would make you uncomfortable in any situation. And as long as you believe that, then it's true. I read a lot of um, stuff like uh, quantum physics, philosophy, and one of the things that I've been, and actually I started teaching this in my seminars um, about uh, quantum physics, is that we used to think that, that reality, right, exists outside of our, our consciousness. If you imagine two concentric circles, there's like our consciousness, then outside of that, there's, there's reality, right. right? But what they're finding with quantum physics is that it's the other way around, right? right? A reality exists inside of our consciousness, right? So essentially, we kind of control our reality. And that's how I look at, um, that's how I, how I tend to look at the world and how I tend to look at, uh, you know, going about game. A quote I've heard before, I don't know who said it, but it's, um, they are guests in my reality, right? And I like that. treat them as such, yeah. right? If they are being, you know, if they're, if they're uh, giving you a hassle, they're giving you shit or whatever, then I'm sorry, you don't take that. It's your reality, you know, take, take control of it. And when you do make that conscious decision to take control of your reality, mm -hmm. then you'll find that things start becoming a lot better and they start, um, things, a lot more things start coming your way. And, um, and that's sort of where my inner confidence comes from. I believe that I run the world. <laughs> And technically, you know, according to science, maybe I do. So, well, you're in your world, right? Exactly. All we can really go by is is what we see and what we hear, and you know, our own sort of uh, perception. Right. And as long as you believe that what you're seeing, what your perception, what you're perceiving is what you're creating, then you can create whatever you want. Um, it's just all a matter of believing it. I think that's where this becomes something bigger than just picking up women. But this becomes being. A it becomes better. being a better person. It right. becomes, it becomes yeah, taking control of your life. My man, thanks for coming on the show. Nice being here.
Let's focus on five important points that Cajun gave us today. Point number one, girls are attracted to the personality behind the lines, not the lines themselves. It doesn't really matter what you say, as long as you deliver with confidence and conviction. Focus on your body language, your voice tone, and use humor. It'll go a long way in helping your game. Point two, when approaching, remember to smile and hold eye contact. This will establish you as a cool, confident guy. The ideas come across as non-threatening, and women find a man who can hold eye contact sexy. Point three, our emotions are what engage us as humans. Be upfront with yours and let her know how you really feel. She's not gonna know that you like her unless you let her know you do. Point four, go out and approach in the day. Day game is important because women aren't used to getting hit on and they'll be more receptive to your approach. Don't be afraid to hit on those tens. Sure, you may get blown out, but you'll learn something and you'll be better for it. Have some pre-written lines in your head just in case you get stuck. Don't rely on them, but have them there as backup. Point five, in the end, women, like us, are looking for a meaningful connection. So believe in yourself and your approach. Feel free to fake it till you make it, and you'll be seeing the matrix in no time. Remember, there's no such thing as failure, only opportunities to learn. And in life, class is always in session. I'm your host, Mark Sparks. See you in the men's room.